Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry. And I'm Lily. And today we have another episode of Lily's Top Games of the Month, aka Board Games of the Bride. So let's get straight to it, Lily. Alright. You ready? <laughs> Alright, so. so we're going to start talking about Lily's favorite games that were new to her this month. And the first game we're going to talk about... Oh gosh. I hope you guys are seeing it the correct way because it looks to me like it's backwards. That's just it the is camera. <laughs> Wingspan. Wingspan. I have to say, I love this game and I love its um, uh, graphics and just it's such a it's such a great game. Like it, it looks thicker than what it is. It's a very light, I find, and pretty quick, like half an hour tops. Yeah, at minutes. two players, probably around. Yeah, there, yeah, half an hour, forty minutes. I've come to like it a lot. I still, well, I did beat Harry the other day by one point, but I don't consider that a victory until it's like three points. So, like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't particular. count. It didn't count. But anyway, really liked Wingspan. Essentially, this lady who probably had never designed any games decided to, and she had like her hobby was, or she loved birds, and she lives in a natural bird reserve. She decided to make a game that was appealing to people like her. And it turns out that there's a lot more people like her than we all realized because we all really, really loved it. I was perusing Instagram yesterday and there's like, gosh, like 88,000 posts that have the hashtag wingspan in I it. I think deep down inside, we're all we're bird, all bird lovers. lovers. Yes. And somebody reached out to me and said that they're going to come out with an iOS um, app so that we could scan the cards and apparently like hear the birds singing. How cool is that? Oh, that is cool. The first time that I played it, I did have some bird songs singing in the background. The second time and the third, not so much. <laughs> but, uh, Wingspan is a great game. It has a uh, very, very, very nice art, as you can see. Uh, you're essentially setting up your nature reserve, and you have the water, you have the meadows, and you have the trees, and the different birds that lay eggs everywhere else. Um, you are deal handling cards, you have the tactile experience of the very nice looking eggs in pastel like colors. Very, very cool. Beautiful, it's yeah. Beautifully designed, perfect. Yeah. Perfect for me. And mechanically speaking, it's a very sound game. It's a smooth system. Um, Lily mentioned that it was light. I'm not going to say it's light. It's, it's not heavy. Definitely not heavy. It's not heavy. It's just it's intuitive nice. and streamlined. And that makes it feel light especially mm -hmm. for an experienced gamer who sometimes is used to dealing with lots of uh, fiddliness in their games this game is not fiddly at all it's very smooth that's the way i would describe it take it from me who hates to learn rules <laughs> as harry would say hates it <laughs> but i always love the after i learn the rules and i go through that grueling experience <laughs> I always love the end result that I can play the game. So yes. I just wish I was the Matrix, Neon and Matrix, and would get like the schematics downloaded in my brain. But don't no we all? Such luck. Mm, school would be so much easier that way. Wingspan, yeah. try it, love it. <laughs> you won't hate it. And I just realized that there's like two more expansions out there. And yes, up in they Oceania. just came out with the second expansion, the Oceania. Yeah. And the Oceania has uh, its own board, so it's like a totally different revamp of the original versus the. You yeah, I was looking at it. That has its only cost. And some of the benefits on the different rows are slightly different. So that looks that looks cool. Well, you go, if you're going to go all the way to Australia, you might as well, might as well get another experience. Yeah. So. Well, I'm looking forward to the additional. I mean, they're, they I think they're planning an expansion for every continent to cover different breeds mm -hmm. or species of birds that are in different parts of the world. So that sounds very fascinating. And I also think that this game is a great educational tool because there's, there's flavor text on the cards mm -hmm. that teach you about the birds, you even learn their wingspans, you have an idea of their um, capacity to lay eggs during a calendar year, and even things like their diet, all these things, and the parts of the world in which you might yeah. find them. Really cool. And it's not like really exotic birds either, like the golden eagle or whatever is not in there. It's like regular birds that you will encounter every day. So it's really cool. It's not like you will learn useless information. These are like birds that you'll see all over. Yeah, so, absolutely. Really cool. Really, really cool. Really, really, really cool. All right, Wingspan. so that was Wingspan. So let's right. move on to our next game, and it's this one right here. Palazzo! Not quite as beautiful. <laughs> you know how I feel about yellow-looking games? Yellow? 
Yeah, just like the tinge, yellowish color, just mustardy. I have a thing against those games. Like, it just turns me off. It's like, ugh. <laughs> but, as I said, once I go through the rules with Harry here, my teacher, and I play it, I may change my mind. And Palazzo was definitely one of those games that made me change my mind. <laughs> Harry kept on trying to advertise it as if it was Alhambra. Well, they make the comparison. Those two games quite often get compared to one another. It is not Alhambra. Do not be fooled. But it is its own great game in and of itself. Essentially, you are building buildings. Uh, not sure. I still have not realized or have not understood how that whole clockwise motion, something or the other, you bid and then the thing moves to the right. Whatever. He, he keeps track of that <laughs> and tells me... Do I have to bid for that or can I just outright buy it? So essentially I ask the same question every round and I'm like, okay, do I have to bid for it? I look at his cards and I'm like, how many cards does he have? The cards are different colors. There's some, um, there's a trick that if you have three cards, even if they're different color cards, but they have the same number, they all count as a 15. So you could use that to upsell whatever you're trying to buy. Um, but if not, you're stuck to just use the regular cards of the same color with the little numbers, like a two or three or whatever. So it's very hard to compete because you never get to draw that many cards to begin with. You're always like with three, four, four cards, the max, five maybe. It depends how many turns you take yeah. to draw because you could continue adding to your supply by using your action to draw more money. But you're definitely using, um, you're using, at each turn you can only do the one thing. You can either draw, you can either place a tile, you can either buy, right? So like you have the one action and you have to like, oh gosh, at the end, like when X amount of tiles, certain specific tiles come out, like you're out of turns and you have to like really budget your time accordingly. Also, if you've happened to buy tiles that are not in, you can mix and match different, different colors of buildings. But if you happen to buy like several two tiles or several three tiles you have to make buildings different types of buildings for those the numbers refer to the different levels the, the, the levels right that, and yeah. then like if you come across the rest of the tiles at a later time then you have to skip a turn to merge one tile at a time so it's like and if you don't then those those one level buildings will count against you uh, at the end of the game there will be negative points at the end of the game right so i mean it's like very tricky Absolutely. It's a, sting it's a stingy it's a game, stingy game, which is one of the things I actually like about it. <laughs> I don't like stinginess. No. <laughs> but I think I've managed to come up with four and a half buildings. That's right. Um, they have like four and a half buildings, like four, level four or five buildings. Oh, okay. And then another building that counted against me. Cause like, yeah, yeah. It was only one level. Yeah, because if you only build, if you build levels, buildings of only up to one level, the game penalizes you for that. So you don't want to just go crazy, join a lot of building tiles, and then saying, oh, I have all these buildings, because the ones that remain at level one will actually count against you at the end of the game. And again, you do get rewarded. The, the game incentivizes trying to build a structure of the same material. There's three different types of materials. It's really just colors. Yeah. And you gain additional points for that. But it's really cool. It's really intricate. I, I, I like the way it all comes together. It's a very yeah. nice mechanism. The only thing, I, the only thing, one of the things I don't like is that when it's done, it's done. That's it. It's like a hard end to the game. It's, it's abrupt. Not, yes. It's very abrupt. You're never ready for it. <laughs> you, you plan ahead, and it's always based on luck. Like a bunch of end ending tiles are mixed in the last round or whatever. Yeah. And then like that's it. Like whenever the last, the fifth tile of those ending tiles comes out. Whatever you were doing, you're no longer doing. So you're thinking that you may have a little bit more chance. I'm curious. It's been a while since we played Alhambra, but from your memories, if between Palazzo and Alhambra, which would you pick? Alhambra has better colors. This is a very Definitely. boring I agree. mustard and gray color. As okay. I said, mustard is just not my color. So you're picking Alhambra. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go on the record saying, even though I've only played this three times and I played Alhambra much more, I think that this is a better design than Alhambra. But I absolutely agree that Alhambra is a million times better looking. Probably a better gateway game. I like puzzles. And Alhambra is like a puzzle. And you're like, okay, well, let me see which way. I, and then, like, can I do a continuous line so I can score for that? And, like, let me see. Does this tile fit here? Sure. But there's different yeah. ways of looking at puzzles. I look at this as a strategic puzzle, not a spatial puzzle. Because you're right. 
There is no spatial. They're just color tiles with numbers on them. So you don't have to orient them a certain way or, or what have you. With Alhambra, you have that spatial puzzle. But this is a strategic puzzle. It's finding the right combination of decisions and the order in which you need to make them to be as efficient as possible when constructing these buildings. I, I like that. It's a little, I would say this is a little, a, a smidge above um, gateway level, a little bit more complex than Alhambra, but definitely Alhambra is way better looking. Okay. Well, now <laughs> we all got through that. <laughs> Alhambra, guys, not the same. Not yeah. so close. Don't get fooled. But do give it a try. So. It is a very um, interesting type of game. It's a Reiner Knizia. So whenever a game is boring and like that, I'm like, oh, okay. It was kids. <laughs> hey, Reiner, we love you. We, we love, love you, Reiner. But I'm sorry. But she like, knows not what she says. Can we just invest a little bit more on, like, color? Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the... Wingspan, people. <laughs> Pastel. Make it blue and you win me over. Let's move on to the next game of the month. And it's a relatively recent game, and that is... Patchwork Doodle. Patchwork Doodle. A great uh, roll and write game. Yes. Is that how you call it? Roll yes. and write roll game. And write. Which um, I have a hard time getting excited about roll and write games because like when you come to the table, it's like, well, what are we doing here? Like, can I just just doodle regularly? Like, what do I have to? But there are some intricate things there. So, uh, my first tip is. Please do not use the pencils provided. Oh, they're terrible. They're terrible. They're awful. <laughs> they're awful. And you can't tell what the heck you just did. Yeah. Just get a pen. <laughs> um, so anyway, so you are essentially having tiles around, right? Yeah, cards with like well, the having, picture having of the cards, tiles. Right, the tiles yeah. with the other patchwork. You're having pictures, uh, cards with pictures. And then it's a very forgiving game because the don't you have like special ability to like up, go up, up one up or yeah down, you have or four special abilities that you could use once a turn and they yeah. kind of help you cheat and break the rules to yeah, some extent they do. yeah it's something everybody's gonna win at some point <laughs> or like you come very very close yeah you have lots of fun so it's like a this is one of those games that you like do when you're brain dead yes yeah that's for doodle yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's, I prefer the other. Oh no, part. Patchwork is definitely a much better, deeper, richer experience. This is a light alternative, a filler. This game could be played probably like in fifteen minutes. Um, twenty. The box says twenty, but that's probably with higher player counts. With two people, it, you know, and it's simultaneous. That's another thing. So it's not like you necessarily are waiting for other people. Like you're basically doing your turns at the same time. I think what's cool about this game is that it challenges you to to keep the puzzle together mm. while regular patchwork you're really just trying to optimize your buttons right your button economy get as many symbols with buttons as possible but you're also trying to cover as mm -hmm. many spaces as possible yeah there's a couple more things more intricacies happening there. here it's just patchwork it's just like trying to make it fit yeah that's all that, that goes on here because here you score based on picking a continuous rectangle mm -hmm. And the, the largest square within that rectangle is going to score you points. So it actually incentivizes you to try to cluster things, that and keep, keep it all together. together. I don't think you have to be eight years old to uh, play yeah. this thing. Um, my four-year-old, our four-year-old, plays Katamino, which is like a very similar version of Flashwork. In any <laughs> case, this might be something that he could get introduced to when he turns five. Five, wow. Patchwork Doodle. Uh, high, expectations. high expectations. High expectations. Alright. Well, let's get to the last game that we learned this past month. Lily. Harvest Die. Another Roll and Write. How are we to Roll and Write lately? I don't know. Roll it and Write is a very popular genre right now within the hobby. For the last few years, it's been, I mean, there's some people that own like 20 Roll and Writes. Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. <laughs> Colorful um, die that represent your veggies and and pens that do work. Do Much better say. than Patchwork Doodle. Please, whoever made these pens, give Patchwork Doodle a hand. Um. Anyway, what was this game about? Yes, I remember now. Okay, so you have three veggies. Essentially, if you don't write or if you don't draw, this game may not be for you. <laughs> your veggies may all look one way. But just do like a stake, a square, and a triangle. That's what we did. 
So um, three veggies, uh, lettuce, uh, carrots, and uh, tomatoes. And essentially, you will have a free market here that you're trying to... How does this work again? Get as well, many the, veggies as possible? Well, the market at the end of the round, remember. one it unused die normal. will increase. It's been a while since we played this. One, uh, the last unused die will increase a particular market corresponding with its color. So you're manip you're even manipulating the market based on what you choose, especially if you're the last person to choose a die in that round, because whatever you don't choose basically is gonna increase in value. So there's, you're factoring that you're in. You're gonna score. You're gonna score based on the things that you put on your little square spaces times the amount that is in the market. Yes. And then you have this other piggy where you whatever is left over from is it a die? Was it a die? Yeah, whatever dice you can't use. Whatever dice you can't use, you can feed you it can to the feed it piggy. To your pig. And with that, that will score you points. Won't it also give you abilities to convert? It, it, it lets you modify die rolls. Yes. Yeah. So it lets you modify a die roll and make it something else. Um and then there's also some rules involved in the proximity of certain objects. Everything needs to be, except for the adjacent first time to each other, yeah. that you place it, everything needs to be adjacent to each other. So you're stuck yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. You know, something that I don't like about games, period, is learning rules. Harry knows that. <laughs> so when I just stop and learn rules over this type of game, it's like, why? You were just saying good things about this game right off camera. I mean, <laughs> it's like, okay, but like, why is it so complicated for for like a roll and die game? I don't get it. Like, patch for doodle, people. At the very least, all I have to do is spatial ability. To make <laughs> things fit. So yeah, it just, it takes a little bit. Like, I remember trying to like remember it. Maybe because I was really tired. We were like, we were like um, in a trip or something and in a hotel room and we're trying to do this on the bed and we're like, how you figuring this out and they're like falling asleep trying to really pay attention so maybe that's why it didn't really like click much with me but i do find that it was a little bit too complex for how simplistic it was sure i mean i i wouldn't have liked it if it was m more simple i i like the, that that's the challenge of the puzzle here is but, that the game puts those restrictions to challenge you take my advice with a very green <laughs> fine green salt because I'm a frustrated harvester, right? Like I have like a little garden outside that didn't produce much this <laughs> season. So I'm not in the, you know, and then okay. I haven't played like, what, what my favorite game is, uh, what's it called? The, Agricola? The Agricola. I haven't played Agricola very, like a while ago. So I just, I like tactile. I like tactile. There's gotta be eggs. There's gotta be like little pieces of squash or little pieces of pumpkins. Tactile experiences. Even the dyes are like tiny. But I do give this this. Give them this. It's very colorful, very functional, and very compact. Yes. So I'll give you that. <laughs> um, yeah. But I don't think it's going to make it to my top. Anything. Anything. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Those are the new games With for the said, month. <laughs> Those are the <laughs> new games you. for the month. Thank you so much for joining us here. For tuning in. For Hi. Lily's top games of the month at When Harry Met Board Games. Thank you for all your support that you give this channel. Comment down below. Have you played any of these games? Do you agree with Lily? <laughs> well, take care, everybody. This is Harry. And this is Lily. Take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. I think we should call this Lily's shenanigans. Don't you agree? Huh?